Hey everybody, welcome back to my under construction basement family room. Um, with that being said, uh, I'm going to show you a really special piece. This one has a lot of sentimental value to me. Uh, it was given to me by uh, very dear family friends after the passing of their father. Their father was a lot like a dad to me, he showed me a lot of the things that I know. Um, that I try to pass along to you folks through these video series that we do. Um, 1914 National Cash Register 500 Series. This was towards the top of the line of the uh, National Cash Register Series that they had at the time. 1914 was the last year for your traditional brass cash register uh, that we all associate with uh, antique cash registers. Um, this one, I believe they called a saloon model. It was originally intended for restaurants. Um, there's a few keys on here that are kind of more specific and geared to that industry. Um, and we'll go a little bit into the backstory on this piece. So now for the exciting backstory behind this National Cash Register. Um, as I said, it was given to me by very dear family friends after the passing of their father in 2015. I've had this about six years and have not done anything with it. Um, initially, I was gonna have somebody else redo it, but I think I am gonna do it myself at this point. Uh, Mrs. Vintage seems to have faith in me, so I'm gonna undertake this restoration myself. Um, we'll do another video on the restoration, but this one, um, I guess uh, to psych you all up a little bit, this cash register was in the original Rock Auto Parts in Detroit, Michigan in the 1920s and 30s, uh, in no way, shape, or form associated with the uh, online retailer Rock Auto that we all know by inexpensive auto parts from today. Um, the Rock Auto Parts was started in the 20s by my friend's father, Carl Rock, and his uncle, Leon. They ran the auto parts through the 1920s and 30s. They had a wrecking yard um, where they dismantled cars for parts. The auto parts was in the front. Um, my family friend, he grew up in the apartment above the auto parts store in Detroit. The store was located on Jefferson Avenue, uh, about a block or so away from the Chrysler plant. Um, fast forward a little bit of time about the fall of 1938, Chrysler knew that the world was uh, kind of getting to war. They had an inkling that they were going to be gearing up for war production, so they knew they needed to expand the factory. Um, so what they did is they went to Carl and Leon and they said, we want to buy this block, we are going to buy your store, we're going to pay for your inventory, everything that's here and then we don't even care if you take it because whatever is left is getting bulldozed with the building. Um, so, um, like good Germans, they went through, um, cleared it out, made the trip from the east side of the state to the west side of the state in a 29 International flatbed truck. Uh, it took about eight hours to go from Detroit to this side of the state. Uh, about 35 miles an hour was the top limit. Uh, cleaned everything out of the auto parts and then Chrysler demolished the block and built onto the factory which became the Chrysler Jefferson complex uh, which was shuttered in about 1990 and eventually torn down. Um, but that being said, this particular cash register was brought back to the side of the state in 1938. It was put into a garage um, and that is where it sat until probably, I would say the late 90s, maybe early 2000s, was in the garage that it was brought to in 1938. Um, Carl Rock passed away in 1944 at 57 years old, suddenly from a heart attack. Um, Carl's grandson had it for a number of years in his barn, never did anything with it, and then he passed it on to me after the passing of his father. Um, from sitting, I won't say in the elements, but in the uh, extreme temperature changes that we experience in the seasons here in Michigan, 
and naturally over, you know, what, 82, 90 years, something like that, um, of being unused. It's completely locked up. Um, far to my knowledge, this cash register has not been opened since 1938, uh, when it was last used. Frankly, I'm curious to see what's inside of it. Nobody has opened the drawers in over 80 years. Um, so we're going to see if we can crack it open today and see if there's anything, uh, some treasures left from us from the past. Uh, if we're lucky, it might be a few bills left in there or some stray coins. Um, if I'm not lucky, it's going to be a total Geraldo Rivera moment. And uh, I thank you for following me along with that. Um, so that being said, we're going to see what we can do to crack into this. All right, now for the moment of truth. Let's see if we can uh, take this panel off now. Okay, well, the bad news is, after several hours of dinking around, um, the internals of the cash register are locked up pretty tightly. Um, the mechanism back here to open the drawer is uh, pretty messed up, so we're going to drill out the lock and take this back panel off and see if we can get to it to open the drawers. Like that, we're in. All right, now that we have the back panel off, we can see that the bell mechanism is back in here. More mouse nest. Obviously, uh, the likelihood of having tripped this open was pretty unlikely. One, two. All right, the moment of truth. Let's see what's in the drawers. Nobody has seen inside these drawers in over 80 years. Mm-hmm. 
Look at that. Like there might have been some paper in there at one time. It's a mouse nest. Looks like we got some old screws. piece of trim. Not really sure where that went, but some old rusty nails, screws, acorns and mouse turds. Got a bunch of rusty old screws, some brackets, a um, couple of long keys. I have no idea what they go to. I don't believe they actually go to this um was probably for something that was in the auto parts unfortunately with my friend dead he was probably the last one left that knew what they ever went to so um those are a mystery as always um mr vintage here um looks like i got my geraldo rivero moment but you know i'm okay with it sometimes the treasure's not what's in the drawer but uh the drawer itself. If nothing else, let's see what this thing comes out looking like on the other side at some point in time.